we've got two excellent speakers here. They're going to present the secrets of alchemy, creating outstanding visuals. Uh, we have Adam Meyer, who works for Pandemic Studios in Brisbane as a senior art and technical artist with a focus as interactive director of photography. He has a deep passion for lighting, shaders, real-time camera systems. He previously worked at EA for 10 years as an art director and CD supervisor, shooting over 21 games like NBA Street, SSX, James Bond. Uh, before gaming, Adam worked as a commercial fashion, product, and portrait photographer. And in his spare time, when he has the energy, he builds robots, which make art. That's pretty interesting as well. Our second speaker for the day is Kirk Gibbons. He a, has a 10-year history in creating innovative, innovative, interactive experiences. Kirk has directed industry-leading teams in both games and on the web. Currently, Kirk is an art director at Pandemic Studios in Brisbane, focusing on creating an innovative next-gen title. Prior to Pandemic, Kirk was the creative director on NBA Street, Street Next Gen and the art director of multi-platinum NBA Street Series B3 and Volume 2 at EA Canada. He is passionate about creating innovative, interactive visuals and inspiring the teams of talent that create. He has a BFA from the Art Center College of Design in Los Angeles and a degree in psychology from University of California in Santa Barbara. Please welcome Kirk and Adam to the stage, please. <coughs> yeah, this is far too early for this, I know. This uh, goes after everyone who has a hangover from last night. <laughs> All right, um, we have a lot of slides, we're going to go really fast. Uh, leave questions to the end. I welcome your questions, of course. Um, and if you want to talk about any more detail, because we're going to have a couple of slides, so we're going to just have through this. Um, real quick, so we kind of gave a quick bio, so I don't want to get um, too deep into it. Um, but I uh, worked a lot on web stuff um, at a place called Red Sky Interactive, and then I started my own little studio called Zendo Studios in uh, Oakland, and then uh, went to EA, uh, where uh, me and Adam started to work together, and then uh, now I'm here at the pandemic in Brisbane. Um, yeah, same. This is doing a little facial more capture, uh, so I'll cover all this. So, from our little crack right point, since Kirk and I were working together, we've had a dynamic for hire, so um, we're very few people for that. <laughs> so, what are we doing? Uh, we have heard rumors. Um, we can't tell you uh, all the details, but we can tell you we're working on the very first um, open world unicorn game that's out there. So this, like, we're actually, this is incredible. Um, we'll get more into the unicorn thing in a, in a second, so uh, I know you guys are going to be really excited about this. But for real, this is what we're doing. Um, it's an open world sandbox game. We've got 20 million polygons in the game. This is uh, on the hardware. This isn't like just what we're pre-rendering for the moment. <coughs> we've got 60,000 light maps in game, which is staggering. And if you can believe it, we've got over 10,000 ray traced area lights, which are going. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, before I worked in that lighting for SSX, and I would never even imagine it's possible. Um, we've got 140 plus render farm going 24/7, so that's uh, a lot of hardware. It's a lot of computing. Um, and every material in the game is a four order, so which one's got the few spec at some speed. Light map, flex map, or cubic map, so four of those. So um, we're pouring it on the shader for um, So this is a, an overlap of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so Kirk's the great teams, fundamentals, and in the end, uh, we're burying our souls into the dump, tips and trace of that, so share the love. <coughs> So um, really quickly, I just wanted to go through some things that uh, you know, I'm really passionate about, which is uh, creating great teams. You know, we talked a lot about uh, technology, you know, how do you get great visuals. Well, um, I think the thing that's really spoken loud and clear as we're working on this next project is even more so on next-gen titles that it's a team effort. I mean, our engineers are just doing a fantastic job. Um, all of our artists are just operating at a, at a completely high level. Um, and our designers are doing um, awesome as well. So how do we get everybody working towards the same goals? It's, it's really important. So um, one of the main things is giving, giving the team something to believe in. I believe that everybody in this room has a chance for greatness and can, everybody in this room can make something great um, on their next title. So um, we got to get the team something to believe in. So here's a few, few ideas you know, coming from 
um, different industries, but uh, um, where they the, they really created something that teams can believe in, and you see the, the effort and the result of, of that belief. So, for example, at Pixar, again, they've got great technology, but um, the first thing that they believe in is that story must come first. And with that, you're getting all these great um, films. And I think Pixar still is the um, per film, the, the greatest revenue per film in, in the history of film. At Apple, um, Steve Jobs thinks that design is as important as technology. And you're getting all these great products. So it's not necessarily every single piece of technology in there is like revolutionary, but the way it's, it's packaged and the way it's wrapped up is something that excites uh, consumers and audiences. I can't really see that photo, but it's the Wii controller, you know, uh, Miyamoto uh, talking, he has a simple belief that interfaces should be simple and intuitive, and that gives birth to the Wii. So, um, as you're going back to your teams, whether you're a lead or whether you're, you know, have, have another role, you can think to yourself, you know, what does this team believe in? What do we stand for? What's bigger, you know, than um, just my day-to-day -day task? It's actually, how are we all working together as a group to create something great? The other part I think is really important is that you know we we need to work as a team, and that in essence is we. So we need to change the me into, into we. So very rarely when we're when we're talking about a team do you say I, because I actually can cause a lot of problems, whereas we um, can make something great. So uh, an example out there again um, is Michael Jordan, which hopefully you guys know down here. But Michael Jordan is known as you know the greatest basketball player of all time. When he was young, he led the league in scoring. He was the greatest dunker of all time, but he never won a championship. And it wasn't until uh, Phil Jackson came along and said, hey, you know what, this has to be about the team. You need to give the ball to other people. You need to let other people score, that all his dreams really came true, and the team started winning championships. So it's a great example of uh, you know, a team can do something greater than an individual. And if you apply that to, to creating uh, next-gen projects, Again, that's a, an avenue to, to greatness. So you can go back to your teams and say, you know, what are we working on together? How can I communicate better? How can I get us all on a, on a group a group mission? <clears throat> Another part that I found is, is uh, what I call I call unleash unleash the passion. So um, when I came to the pandemic, I, I met with all the artists, and some guys were actually not in the right position. And so, um, for example, we had a guy who was modeling. He wasn't all that happy. He did he did an all right job. And when I met with him, he's like, oh, cameras, that's what I love. And he goes home and he watches films and he watches games and every day he's thinking about cameras. So we said, well, let's get you on the cameras. And he'd done a lot of work on the side on cameras. And um, so that guy now is actually working with Adam and he's probably uh, one of the highest performing guys on the team and he's adding a ton to the project. And it's because we're actually got him into things that he cares about and the things that he's passionate about. So you kind of wonder, you know, how many people are out there on your teams that have you taken the time to really find out what they love and getting them into the right space so that they can create something great. So it's another way of going from, from an individual and finding out what they're, what they're passionate about and then having them contribute to the whole, to the, to the whole team. The next part is expect greatness. So again, every project we start, I always think it can be, be great. Not because I'm there or Adam's there, but because we as a team can make something great. And you have to expect that out of your team. Because um, if you do, you're going to have a lot of wonderful things happening. But if you just kind of say, oh, yeah, this could be OK, you're going to get OK. But if you expect greatness, um, you're probably going to find it. So um, every project can be, you know, has the opportunity to be the next Bioshock or the Call of Duty or Gears of War. And it's up to, to you as a team to create that atmosphere. The other part when you expect greatness, though, is an innovation, is that if people are putting their heart and soul into things, and they're really trying things, they're going to make mistakes because they're trying hard. Um, so it's important, you know, that we that we support that. And uh, you know, it's, it's hard work, and you're, you put God, you love what you do, and you're pushing and pushing and pushing, and you know, making a mistake or doing something wrong isn't the end of the world. It's actually really great because uh, you know we're trying new things. So it's important that uh, we create an atmosphere where we expect greatness, but at the same time realize that. Uh, 